Have you ever heard of the Ocean State Follies? Yeah. He's famous. Please welcome to the stage, Charlie Hunt. You guys have seen the Ocean State Follies, perhaps? Yeah. Before? Yeah. For those who don't know, that's a show, kind of a uh, semi-political. It kind of pick on things. Of course, it's, it's been a little bit dry ever since Buddy Cianci passed away. <laughs> But I know he's up there. I know that Buddy is up in heaven making things work. Yes. By now, I know that he's already gotten, let's say, uh, Noah from the flood and Moses from the burning bush together for their own little water fire every Saturday night. <laughs> Even Rocky Point. Rocky Point died some years ago. Rocky Point's up in heaven. Yeah. And Buddy's happy about that. Yeah. Because the... Uh, it, there's that sign there that says you have to be this high to ride this ride. And he's thinking, oh, I can't wait when Cicilline gets here. He'll be screwed. <laughs> and let's not forget our former governor, Bruce Sunland. Bruce Sunland, of course, has passed away. Um, and I happen to think that Bruce is up there thinking that he should not be up there. Because he was a very arrogant type of a fart, wasn't he? Was, you know that Bruce is thinking, ah, I'm up here by mistake. The only reason why I'm here is because God misread the sign on Route 95 that says, Bruce Sunlit, terminal. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard this. You were coming over here about, uh, what, like 6 or uh, 7.30 or 8, but it was just on the news. You know that whole uh, college admission scandal that's happening? They just had it. It was a couple. Turns out they just found another couple from Rhode Island who paid $60,000 to get their kid into CCRI. <laughs> so, good to have the Italians here. I am half Italian myself, believe it or not. I am, uh, my mother's maiden name was Aiello. Aiello. A I E L L O. Six letters, four of the vowels, that's Italian. <laughs> you couldn't afford to buy that word in the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> so, let me tell you, let me tell you what's going on. Um, about uh, six or seven years ago, I had a heart attack. Okay, I want to talk about my health a little bit here. Okay? So, I had a heart attack, and um, I didn't have any health insurance. I didn't have Medicare, Medicaid, Metamucil. I had nothing. <laughs> Does anybody here know what a heart attack costs? $98,000. $98,000. Thank God I had a Groupon. <laughs> ah, it's so expensive. Oh, I can't believe it. And then, you know, I had my cholesterol. I, you know, it happens, right? Does it happen in your family too? The cholesterol, the pasta, the cheese. That's what happens. My cholesterol was 545. Whoa. My SATs weren't this high. <laughs> they want to put in this stent. I'm like, I can't afford a stent. Get a little piece of penne. Just stick it right up there. <laughs> oh, it is tough. It is tough to get old. Um, you know, losing my hair. Thank God, though, it's sprouting back in from my ears. <laughs> Any day now, I'm just going to grow it long and comb it over. <laughs> look, look, look. Can you see that? Can you see that in my ear? <laughs> I have hearing aids. I have hearing aids now. I lost half my hearing. Half my hearing. Oh, it's horrible. I, it's horrible. I went to the doctor. And he, checked my, he said, well, let's put in some hearing aids. Well, how much are they? Do you know what they cost? Six thousand dollars. Wow. Six thousand dollars. Let me see. Do I want to hear or do I want a sports car? <laughs> Six thousand. So I got one hearing aid and a moped. But <laughs> the worst thing is though, it, it, it picks up little uh, emissions from you know transmissions from outside. Cop cars go by and everything. And uh, it's it's just so. Excuse me. Yeah, welcome to Taco Bell. <laughs> No, we're out of burritos and tacos. Okay, two sodas? Great. That'll be $45. Drive up. It's, it's, so, it's so crazy when this happens. It is so... Oh, hold on. Yes, flight US 140. 
yeah, decline at these coordinates, uh, 1670.2. <laughs> What's happening? Oh, oh, your gear? Your gear's not coming down. Oh, okay. Well, all of our runways are closed anyway. Try Post Road. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, if the gear stays up for four hours, call your physician. <laughs> I went, I went skiing for the first time. You think a, a hockey player would be used to, to skiing. I went, I went skiing in uh, Vermont, this mountain called Killington. You heard of Killington? You don't want to start in a mountain called Killington. It's like going to a proctologist whose last name is Longfinger. You want to stop me over this giant slope. I'm like, I'm going to kill myself on that slope. I want that little hill right over there. I'm like, Charlie, please, that's the handicap ramp to the lodge. <laughs> and you can see what's happening. My, my, my belly is soft. My arteries are hard. My bladder is small. My prostate's large. <laughs> um, my skin is tight. My stools are loose. <laughs> Why am I talking like Dr. Seuss? I... <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes you have to laugh, you know. Some of those jokes, you know. Lady, uh, a lady calls her husband. Her husband's driving on, on, on Route 95. The lady calls the husband. Harold! Harold! I just heard on the news! There's somebody on the highway in his car driving in the wrong direction! He says, one guy, there's a hundred guys driving in the wrong direction. <laughs> so I'm a little bit weird. Really. Uh, I'm a little bit off center. I was always kind of, you know, to become a comic, you have to be kind of a little bit kind of wacky, you know? Uh, like, in other words, uh, I'm suicidal, but I procrastinate. <laughs> You sell razor blades? Yeah. Uh, I'll get them tomorrow. Uh, let's see what else. When I was a kid, I was very weird as a kid. Uh, I was grew up in the Elmer section. Over there, you know, Mount Pleasant, LaSalle Academy, over there. And uh, but there were no girl, there were no boys in the neighborhood of my age. I was like 10, 11 years old. There were just girls. And so I had to play with the girls. So all the girls had Barbie dolls, and I had a G.I. Joe. So after a while, I just started dressing my G.I. Joe in Barbie's clothes. Yeah. All of a sudden, I had transgender Glenda. She could operate a tank while wearing one. But this is a good job to have when you think like that. You know, this is a, the very first job I ever had, I was a janitor. Okay. That's what it was, 16-year-old janitor. Of course, today now, what do they call janitors? You know, custodial engineers, which to me is like calling a hooker a genital technician. <laughs> Kind of up today. I just got a brand new puppy, and I. You guys have puppies? Have dogs? Yeah. Okay, dogs? Okay, golden doodle. Okay, those are delicious with a root beer. Uh, you have a dog? No, sir. Okay. All right. What do you? Well, what do you have? I'm sorry. Terrier. Terrier. Yeah. I have a great dog. My dog uh, never eats, never sleeps. Uh, he's a crystal meth lab. <laughs> Uh, although I don't even, you know, I have an appointment to bed. I don't, I don't, you're not gonna believe this. You know. You're not gonna believe that, Charlie. Hold, this wouldn't happen to you. My car got repossessed last week. My car. I was in a gig, and I went out, and my car is repossessed, only because I missed one payment a month. <laughs> Yeah. Okay.
Now we're talking about sneakers. How tough it is to... Because every sneaker is a specialty sneaker. There is a, a running shoe. There's a climbing shoe. There's a soccer shoe, a football shoe, a tennis shoe. A, there's a shoe for every... There's even a walking shoe. What is a walking shoe? A walking shoe? Isn't that kind of redundant? A walking shoe. It's like buying a pair of sitting pants. I like the way these pants sit. A walking shoe. Tell you what, you know what that's... Next time, next time you stop by the cops for drunk driving, say, I'm sorry, I can't walk the line. I'm not wearing my walking shoes. <laughs> well, what do you got on? I used to call them my lush puppies. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, I, I'm half Italian. And, uh, uh, of course, I used to get hit with the wooden spoon. How many used to get hit with the wooden spoon? Remember the wooden spoon? My mother would take this thing right out of the macaroni as it was cooking. She'd be like Mom Vader. She'd be like... <laughs> you kids are pissing me off. May the sauce be with you. <laughs> I just had these stains on my pants. <laughs> Is that blood? No, it's Prego. <laughs> but I do love, I saw we had some cold cuts, we had some salami or something there. I love prosciutto. You like the prosciutto? Yeah. Prosciutto. Oh, I love it. It's, a, for those who, it's Italian ham. Italian ham! Let me ask you this, does the pig know it's Italian? <laughs> Are the pigs in Johnston going, hey, not for nothing, but oh, I... <laughs> Anybody here not from Rhode Island? Like Boroughville or Westerly? <laughs> You're not from Rhode Island, right? No. So you think do you think we have kind of a strange accent? Yeah. Okay. Alright, very good. Very good. Alright, folks. So here we go. So I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna tell a little story because folks, not for nothing. <laughs> but I know a lot of you don't really want to learn anything, and right now you are just saying, I'm shooting my pants. <laughs> Some of you are just torn apart. Torn apart, you have to come out on a, on a Saturday night. But look, you're going to learn something tonight, and that's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. I see a lot of lovely girls. Oh, look at how lovely you are. But like that. Mm. Oh, you have beautiful teeth. <laughs> beautiful teeth. And, and next to you, you have nice teeth too. <laughs> Together they have nice teeth. <laughs> I don't want to alarm you. But, uh, you know. I want you, as an audience, to uh, act dignified and with honor. <laughs> I don't think that anyone here is going to laugh actually more than me. Now, let's talk about the language in Rhode Island. Rhode Island, as you all know, is not the largest state. <laughs> Uh, um, but I'm here to educate you and to see how smart you are. This is a real lesson tonight here at the Sons of Italy. We are learning how to talk Rodines and the premise of speaking the Rhode Island accent is that in our alphabet we don't pronounce ah ahs. In fact, the letter R isn't even in this. Okay? I'm sorry if I sound disjointed, but these cards are out of order. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, so um, I'm going. To, I, w I was going to your bar, the Mirror Bar, right? Go down there, and my, I, I go to park my car, and all of a sudden it's missing, and evidently it was stolen by some 17-year-old youths. <laughs> 17 year old Utes, so I called the police and I said, somebody stole my beat. <laughs> and the cop says, look, you gotta uh, relax, go in the beer bar and have a drink, you gotta make yourself comma. <laughs> Because if those guys stole your car, I'm going to catch them eventually, and to them, that will be karma. <laughs> I like the way you laugh. Because you're laughing at them, because you know that, that it's much more funny phonetically. <laughs> you was with me? <laughs> That's why I know you like it. Plus, you have a big mouth. <laughs> A big, he has a big mouth with a big laugh. I can see it. I can see his mouth clearly from here, and I can see a little Kosar right there. Too. Look, you're going to be careful. You're going to be careful over there at that place. You think that's funny? It's not. Now, I know for some of you that this lecture has been torture. But we, there's still plenty laughs to go in the show. Plenty laughs to go. And yeah, you know how many? About uh, 34. <laughs> right, Mary Ellen, you have 34 laughs, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, by the way, <laughs> by the way, when they caught when they caught the, the youths who stole my car, and I told the cop that I drove a Bima, he said, kind of cause that. <laughs> he said, they didn't have a lock? I'm like, no, I left my car keys inside. <laughs> I'll see you. I'm performing all next week at Job Lot. <laughs>